Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to look at the Kindle Fire HD. This is the 7 inch model, the 8.9 inch model will be coming approximately November 20th of 2012. And this one replaces the original Kindle Fire obviously with a higher resolution display, much improved speakers and a lot of other good stuff. We're going to take a look at it now. So the Kindle Fire HD 7 inch model is available now. It is $199 for the 16 gig model. And there's also a 32 gig model available for those of you who want more internal storage. Uh, there is no micro SD card slot on either of these, so internal storage does count for something, though Amazon would love you to use their free cloud services to get stuff on and off the device without needing too much internal storage. And that 199 price point and 7 inch form factor really make an interesting conundrum here. Is the Google Nexus 7 inch the best $199 tablet, or is the Kindle Fire HD 7 inch the best? I would say that there isn't one single best because they really have very different philosophies and we're going to do a separate smackdown but just to give you the idea you know what Amazon Kindle products are like they are designed for content consumption they have a customized Android interface here this does not look like Android particularly does it if we hit the home button you see the carousel view sometimes a little dorky if you're looking at an app icon that's stretched that big much nicer if you see web pages and magazine covers all that sort of thing so not your standard Android experience right there but awesome for consuming Amazon services. That means Kindle Books, Amazon Prime, Instant Video, the free stuff, Amazon Video, the ones that you can pay for if it's not free and available on Prime, their magazines, their app store, a lot of content you can choose from on the device. So for those of you who primarily want a tablet to consume those kinds of services, books, magazines, movies, well, really it's a very turnkey, easy to use product. Amazon has great customer service, they have good prices, hard to beat it. Now, if you're looking at the Nexus 7, you're, you're more of a power user because Nexus devices usually are aimed at power users and you can do things like root the device, customize it to your heart's content, and you have full access to the Google Play Store and all Google services, which you don't have here. So, really, do you want an all-purpose tablet? Do you want something to geek around with and root and customize? Or do you want something for content consumption? If you say, I like content consumption, keep watching this video. Next issue, do you already own a Kindle Fire, the one that came out a year ago? You're wondering if you should upgrade? You know, I have to say there are a lot of nice improvements here. I personally do own the original Kindle Fire, and the HD has a higher resolution display. This is an IPS display, 1280 by 800 pixels, so considerably higher resolution than the 1024 by 600 resolution on the original Kindle Fire. So obviously a much sharper display, and that's important for devices you're going to be used for reading books, reading magazines, and it's also very nice for watching video. It is noticeably better. You put them side by side and lots sharper. You see more on screen if you're using the web browser. Also, this guy is faster. 1.2 gigahertz TI OMAP dual core processor with double the RAM since the original Kindle Fire had 512. That should mean that this has a gig of RAM. It's reporting about 752, but uh, our technical utilities often don't manage to report on all the RAM that's available. Web browsing particularly much faster. And that's not even with using Amazon Silk that's supposed to speed up web browsing because I've found that it never really does so much. You can turn that on, you can turn that off. It's really using Amazon's caching engine on their servers to try to speed up web pages that are loaded to you. But yeah, noticeably faster. And I'm talking about the rendering of web pages. Amazon's made a big deal about the fact that this has dual band, Wi-Fi, AS11, and BGN. And it has MIMO, so if your router supports that, you can get even faster simultaneous streams back and forth. But just the actual rendering of the page is a lot quicker on this. That said, this is not the, the smartest CPU on the block. If you're looking at something like this compared to the uh, Tegra 3 that's on the Nexus 7, not so much so fast. Now we've sideloaded Quadrant on this, and it scored a 2174. And that's considerably lower than the near 5000 score that you'll see on Tegra 3 devices. And in, on Tutu Benchmark, it scores 6,300, which is pretty reasonably respectable. It does a little bit better there. So, despite Amazon marketing claims about this slightly iterated TIO map CPU, this is not the super fastest. However, it is certainly adequate to do the tasks that the Kindle Fire was meant to do. It renders even rich magazines very well. It plays HD video streaming from Amazon's cloud very nicely. It plays locally stored video just fine as well. In terms of looks, it's also improved. Amazon's Kindle devices, I don't think they're ever going to be super sexy. They're inexpensive and design, pretty design costs money, and usually you have to pay a premium for that. So, hey, for $199, bucks, you are not going to get the sexiest device. But that said, this is not too bad looking. Yes, it does have a very large bezel. And these days, right now, we think small bezel is more elegant and more sophisticated. So, 
you're not getting that here. But there is a reason for that, ergonomically speaking. A lot of people would complain that there wasn't enough room to hold onto the device when reading, because a lot of people like to put their hands on the side like that and hold onto it. Well, it gives you room to do that. The device feels very sturdy. And we finally got some curves here. This is not square like the last gen Kindle Fire. So it's not bad looking. It's kind of modern. It's a little bit like the Nexus 7, in fact, with the curvy sides. If you take a look at the back, we've got it upside down right now, so you can see the stereo speakers here. What a huge improvement of the original Kindle Fire, which had fairly quiet speakers that were easily muted when you held it in your hand. In fact, I used that when I was using my exercise bike, and just the sound of the little whirring of the pedals was enough to drown out the Kindle Fire. I had to use external speakers. This one's loud enough. It has Dolby Audio. Dolby Audio is something, you know, we've seen this in tablets before. Manufacturers make a big deal about it, but unless the speakers are good and the audio chip is good inside, it really doesn't make much of a difference. In this case, this has very nice sound. Loud, rich, full, great separation. Even listening to music is pleasant, and usually listening to music on small tablets and smartphones is pretty... Eh, you're missing most of the dynamic range, and, and yeah, this sounds nice. So we have a soft touch finish here, feels good in the hands, it's, again as I mentioned, pretty rugged. And on the side here, this is our power button and this is our hardware volume controls. Let's hear it for hardware volume controls, important for a device that's going to be used for watching movies. There's your 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone combo mic jack. These guys are not the easiest to find by tactile feel. It's actually easier if you use Amazon's case that we'll show you in a minute. They make a really nice form-fitting case. It's, it's leather with some molded hard plastic around the edges that has all the right cutouts and the button controls and stuff. Microphone up there. Yes, it has a microphone. Yes, you can do Skype. Nothing going on on this side. Just our speaker grill showing. And here we have, wow, micro HDMI out so you can actually plug this into your TV if you don't already have a DVD player or smart TV or something that you can use to watch Amazon content, you can actually just plug this guy in to do that. And we have the micro USB port. If you compare this to the original Kindle Fire, you know, the funny thing about the Kindle Fire was it actually was not that thick a device, but given the squared off Blackberry Playbook like design, it looked chunkier than it was. And the footprint of our new model is actually just a little bit bigger if we put them on top of each other. You can see we've got them right on top of each other. So this guy's actually a little bit wider, and that is because of the extended bezel. Now we're comparing it to the Nexus 7, and the uh, amazing thing is Nexus 7 looks thinner, but they're really about the same size if you lay them on the table side by side, in terms of thickness. Nexus 7 is a teeny bit taller in portrait mode. And in terms of width, it's going to be narrower. So the, the ergonomics of the Kindle Fire HD are a lot more like a 4x3 experience, which is good for reading, uh, just psychologically. We, we don't like things that are long and narrow, most of us, for reading. We feel like we're reading a single column in text. We've got the standard features that you come to expect. We have x-ray for books. We have syncing of your place called WhisperSync when you're reading. Now we have Whisper Sync for videos, which is nice. So you can start out watching your video over here, then switch over to some other device or your set-top box kind of thing, and uh, pick up the movie right where you left off. That's pretty nice. We have immersion reading. Now if you want to read the book while listening to the Audible book being read to you, you can do that. And there's syncing also for audiobook reading. We have Whisper Sync for games. If it's a compatible game, it'll save your game save, your place where you were, even if you delete the game and reinstall it. And Amazon now has their game circle. It seems like everybody wants to do what Apple's doing and have the little social networking thing set up so you can share and multiplay games and share scores, that kind of thing. That's what that's about. The Fire HD weighs 13.9 ounces, so it is just under a pound. At its thickest point, it's 0.4 inches, less than a half an inch. This is a 10-point multi-touch display that we've got here. And the battery, as is usual for tablets, is sealed inside lithium-ion rechargeable battery. And Amazon claims it's good for about 11 hours of mixed use. And one thing to note is this does not come with a charger. This is how they up the hardware without charging you more. They leave out things like, well, the charger. So you can either USB charge this, you can buy Amazon's charger for 20 bucks seems a little steep to me, doesn't it? There's a way to make some money back that they are barely making on this device. Or you can use pretty much any USB charger you have. If you have a USB smartphone charger or tablet charger, if that's a micro USB output for your tablet, that can vary depending on the town. But anyway, it's going to work with this. I've used a couple of different chargers. I use one from my Samsung Galaxy S3. It worked fine. I have a generic 
USB charger that can output up to 2 amps, it worked fine as well. This, the charger that they do sell is a 1.8 amp charger. So you get the idea. If you're using something that's 500 milliamps or half an amp, it's going to take longer to charge versus a higher capacity charger. Now today's smartphone chargers are mostly 1 amp, so you could, should be able to charge it in about four and a half, five hours maybe. And Amazon claims with their own charger you can charge it as quickly as four hours. The tablet does not have a GPS, however it can do location-based services using Wi-Fi triangulation, which is actually fairly uh, accurate these days, so it's good enough. You know, you might miss one front door versus the other in houses that are close together, but it certainly is good enough to give you general information on maps, and it's the same thing that the iPad without 3G, 4G uses to give you location information. It has an ambient light sensor, an accelerometer, and a gyroscope, and it has Bluetooth with A2DP, so you can use stereo headsets, stereo speakers, that kind of thing. Nice. The Kindle Fire HD runs Android OS 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich, though so it's highly customized, as you can see here, and as Amazon has done before with the original Kindle Fire, so you won't see a lot that's recognizable from Ice Cream Sandwich. But that is what's underneath. Latest and greatest Android OS. Of course, there is Jelly Bean as well, but close enough. And the user interface, no, it hasn't really changed much from the last Kindle Fire. I, it looks a little bit better here in portrait mode because some of those icons get blown up really large. But you've got the carousel view right here, and we have related things underneath. This is the email application. There's the latest book I've been reading, and it's going to try to come up with some items maybe to suggest down there. Maybe it'll succeed, maybe it won't. And it's about selling you stuff, obviously, to a certain extent. I'm looking at my Android File Explorer that I've downloaded here, and it's showing me other apps that people have bought on the Amazon App Store. And we've got these tabs up here. You can see the UI is pretty responsive, certainly a lot better than the original Kindle Fire when it first came out, and even after a couple of firmware updates, it never quite got that zippy. So, say we wanted to look at our books. And this is showing what's on the device, and I could switch to cloud and see everything I've got in the cloud. So that these views are much more exciting. And if we take a look at music, what I've got in my cloud. So we get the bookshelf metaphor here, and we can start playing from right inside. And we can access anything on our Amazon cloud. You actually don't have to download it on the device. You can stream it if you prefer to do that. By the way, this is a Wi-Fi only device. There is no 3G or 4G option. If you're looking for that, that's the 8.9 inch Kindle Fire HD that's coming out at the end of November. Video interface is one of the more rich interfaces here, and you can see it's suggesting stuff on Prime. And it'll often tell you, you'll get little updates down at the bottom, it'll tell you about the latest thing that's available on Prime for free, like West Wing or something like that, which I actually find pretty handy. So you can scroll through all the movies, you can see more, you can search for movies, Yeah, you can see things that I've watched. Good stuff. Newsstand. Magazines on the Kindle Fire HD are an interesting thing, just as they are with the Kindle Fire. Some magazines have been updated and you get a very Zinio-like beautiful approach. I'll show you one of those. Nothing beats a pretty car magazine. And this is very, very much like using Zinio on any other tablet. So you get a beautiful view. It may not be so easy to read those, but you can double tap and switch to reading view. Again, it's a feature that Zinio has. So that, that's more practical. First you can say, ooh, what a pretty magazine that is, and then I can't read that. That text is awful small, even though this is a nice, sharp display. So you can switch to this. I still feel like a 10-inch tablet, maybe even the 8.9-inch, that's the sweet spot for reading magazine format things, but that's why we have this reading view. And if you want to get to the list of sections in a magazine, we just tap right here, and here's an easy way to navigate around without having to thumb through all the pages. And there we have our article on the new Chevy Impala. And now in comparison, we'll look at a, a magazine that hasn't been so optimized for a graphical view. We're looking at Science News, which has a lot of good content, But everything is pretty much in that easy text view. So if, you, if you're if you looking for a magazine with a lot of graphical richness here, not so much. Now when you're shopping for magazines, it will tell you if it has that page view mode. So if you're really looking for something that's pretty and rich, or it's the kind of magazine where that makes sense, like a photography magazine, you can find out first before you subscribe to it. And most magazines, you get a 30-day free trial. You can try it out and then cancel it if it wasn't what you were hoping. 
And you can see up here we also have photos and you can again do cloud to get those on here using Amazon Cloud Services and we have docs and then we have offers and here's an important thing this thing comes with offers just like the other Kindles that Amazon has released and that means you see an ad as your screensaver when you wake it up but ah it's not quite the same thing as the e-ink one where it just switches to a uh, an advertisement instead of a dead author when it's sleeping and when you wake it up you go right back to your book and I'll show you what I mean but anyway if you did get an offer and you were interested in it the offers tab will show you all the current offers All right. now here's what you see okay this is an ad for a new TV show which I found sometimes these things are more interesting than I expected. I both love and hate the ads for that reason. So you swipe, and instead of going right back to your book or your movie, what you're going to is the full advertisement. So it's another step to then hit the home button and then get back to your device again. That can be a little bit annoying. But on the other hand, sometimes these things are interesting. Like, oh, this is the new J.J. Abrams TV show I'm kind of interested about. So look, there's a video. I can tap that, and I can watch it. And listen to those speakers. Nice, right? And we're about two-thirds of maximum volume right now. Also, a beautiful screen for watching video. So that's the ad feature, something you can both love and hate. And sometimes it gives you great free offers, like five bucks of free Amazon uh, movie downloads. Hard to dislike that, isn't it? But should you decide that you just can't stand this stuff, for 15 bucks, you can get the ads removed, Amazon says, after waffling back and forth whether you could or whether you can't. Final word seems to be for $15, you can get the ads removed if you don't like them. Nextly, there's an app story, and this has not changed much from the last Kindle Fire. Well, some things have changed. I, I, I'll take that back. You now have easier access to Gmail. You can set up the email client to pick up your Gmail just like anything else. There's actually a calendar application Woohoo! and contacts. So, there's your calendar, and you can switch between list view, weekday, month view. Reasonable calendar. Not too bad. And we have our contacts application right there. Again, I mentioned you can pick up Gmail on this, so that's an improvement. And you have access to anything that's on the Amazon App Store. In fact, if you have an account already, it's going to show you everything. If I switch to cloud, it's going to show me a whole bunch of stuff. If it has a check mark, it means I've already downloaded it. Anything that is up there, but I haven't downloaded it, I can just tap on it. For example, maybe I want Hulu Plus for Kindle. That's, that is actually available. I can download that. If I don't want to use the Kindle app to read Adobe Reader documents, I can download that there. And then you'll notice a few things that, if you're savvy, you know are not on the Amazon App Store on my device. For example, I have Dropbox. I have Quadrant for benchmarking here. And that's because I've sideloaded those. You can do that. You can go into settings and select it to allow installation of non-Amazon applications. And if you have a smartphone or a tablet, particularly a tablet if you want tablet optimized applications, that most likely you've rooted, then you can extract applications off there using something like ROM Toolbox Lite and then send them over to your Kindle. In fact, that's why I have Dropbox installed primarily because I've been using my Nexus 7 extracting some apps since I've rooted the Nexus 7 and I can do that just to get them over here onto this device. So that's one way around not having access to the Google Play Store which can be a big deal to some folks. Amazon has a really nice selection of apps on the App Store but they clearly don't have everything that's available on the Google Play Store. We've even downloaded a couple of other things like the YouTube Player. The, the, the Google YouTube Player does not come standard on this but it works just fine. And in fact we've actually downloaded Chrome. Now the built-in web browser is based on Chromium uh, and it does a fine job, honestly, but just in case you want Chrome, put it on here as well. Uh, but both of these, though, you cannot log into your Google account if you want to. So if you want to log into your Google account in YouTube, sorry, that's one thing you can't do. But you can use it to watch videos, and we'll check that out. So here we've got the nice latest Google UI right here for YouTube, and uh, we'll look for our own channel. And there's our channel of videos, and we'll check out our review of the Nexus 7. So here we have it working just fine. 
So that's side loading of applications onto the Kindle Fire HD. I did not root it, did not do anything to it, just just like I said, just downloaded the, the apps using my Dropbox account. You could use your Amazon Cloud account too, I suppose, to do the same thing to load those up. Now we're going to look at the web browser and you can see it's giving me the choice between the Amazon Silk browser and Chrome because I've installed those and this is typical of Android until I pick a default it's going to give me the uh, option of selecting either one. We're just going to stick with Silk right, right now and give ourselves the option. And it downloads rather quickly. It's nice. And we'll get back to our home page. And yes, it's, like I said, once I tell it what I want to do it's not going to bother me anymore so if you saw Chrome you don't have to worry about it. Fast rendering not bad. I have turned off Amazon's caching feature. You can get to those options. Right here, you can see we've got links for downloads, find in page, share the page. And there's all your settings for the Silk browser, blocking pop-ups, choosing your search engine. By the way, the default search engine is Bing. I switched it over to Google. You can also choose Yahoo, as you can see. The Accelerate Page Loading feature is that Amazon caching feature I told you about that I find is often faster if you turn that off. You can choose whether your most recent web page is displayed in the main home page carousel. Depends on what you tend to look at and how embarrassed you are by it, I guess. You can clear history, clear cache, control your cookies, the usual standard stuff. And back we are. So, certainly it works fine. Does HTML video nicely. And let's pick a review of the Droid Razor M, and we're going to switch over to Chrome just like that. See how Chrome works on this. Also very quick. Honestly, very similar performance. And we'll play the YouTube video inside of Chrome. Again, this is an HTML5 video. Flash Player is not on board anymore. Adobe has killed Flash. Now, that doesn't mean it's completely gone from the world. It just means that they're not going to support it anymore. As of August 15th, you can find places to download, like XDA developers, to sideload it. Or you can go to Adobe's website and also sideload it if you want. However, it doesn't work in Chrome Engine browsers, so you're going to have to use a different browser for that. And it wouldn't be a Kindle if we didn't look at books, so here we are back in the books section. And we're going to take a look at a book that did come from Amazon. And you can see you've got notes, you've got the x-ray feature. We'll tap that again. Sharing, bookmarking, all the nice stuff. And here's all your formatting options. Typically it does a very nice job of formatting books. We've also sideloaded Nook on here just for the heck of it, so we can read books from both of those stories. And I actually prefer the formatting options and presentation a little bit on the Kindle, to tell you the truth. Nice, easy to read. The screen is reasonably bright. It's not ultra, ultra, super bright by any means, but when you're reading books, you don't want a lot of brightness because it's only going to kind of burn your eyes after a while. The, Amazon has reduced the glare. They claim they have polarizing filters on these and anti-glare and everything. It's a pretty shiny screen, folks. Let's put it that way. This is not a matte screen, but this is definitely improved from the glare monster that was the original Kindle Fire. And if we press on the hold on a word like Victorian, it's nice you just instantly get a definition. That's one thing I like about this better than the way Nook it handles it, where it just gives you a pop-up of various options. Probably most of the time you just want to look up the meaning of the word. So we get that, and we have notes, options, sharing, more. We go to the full definition, and if we choose more, you can search in the book, search Wikipedia, search the web. And of course, if the book supports x-ray, you can use x-ray on the book, too. And how about a side-loaded book? Let's go back to our library. And here's a book that I have side loaded. I've converted in Calibre to Mobi format, which is what Kindle likes. Works equally as well. You can do the same thing if we want to press and hold on Word. Got the same features right there. Nice. Bookmarking, all that works too. And looking at videos, Prime Instant Video and just regular Instant Video, the UI hasn't changed much here, but that's fine because it's a very nice presentation. What is changing is how many TV shows and movies Amazon is adding quickly. They are really chasing after Netflix and trying to get a lot of content on board. They still don't have everything Netflix has, but who knows what's going to happen in about another two years or so. So here's Downton Abbey, available for free on Prime, and we'll check out how that looks. Play it just a little bit. 
And here we have a little Morse code going on. It's playing beautifully. It sounds great. Again, really nice speakers. And that HD screen, it's just perfect. It's just the right resolution for a screen this size, I think. Lastly, the Kindle Fire HD adds a front video chat camera. They don't state the resolution, they just call it HD. It's really good, folks. A Skype is pre-installed on this and we test it out. Nice, bright, and sharp. Certainly better than average among smartphones and tablets. So it's actually quite viable. And again, the speakers work well, or you can use a headset or even a Bluetooth headset if you prefer with it. But yeah, it, it works for video chat. So for those of you who want to keep in touch with the grandkids or your uh, children back home when you're traveling on business, does the job nicely. And of course, Amazon's going to have a nice selection of accessories for this. There are actually already third-party accessories like cases. And I mentioned that Amazon makes their own case available in a bunch of different colors and charger. I'm sure there's going to be more stuff, but we don't usually cover cases too much, but Amazon's $45 case, a little bit expensive, I'll give you that, but leather case, reinforced plastic on the sides, fabric on the inside to keep your screen safe, and plastic, hard rubbery plastic insert here, really nice molded. It's got to be one of the thinnest cases anybody's ever going to make that actually protects real well thanks to this kind of plastic here. And it fits on like a second skin. It's really nicely done. Easier to get it in than it is to get it out again. So squeeze it and pops right in. The thing is not going to come out by accident. Wild pink color. You can see you have access to the ports easily. On this side, here's our buttons. Work just as well as if there was no case at all. In fact, I find it a little bit easier to push on these than I do on the tablet's actual buttons. Cut off your headphone jack, and then there's the speaker grill. So it's nice looking, it works, and it's a magnetic cover. So you close it, puts it to sleep. You open it, we're going to see one of those ads. There they are. Nice and slim. And it functions as a two-way stand. Simple premise there, you just, it's got that little grippy block on the back. You just prop it up at whatever angle you like. And you can put it in portrait mode as well to read a book. And, you know, it's reasonably sturdy. I can tap on it's not falling down, but this is not something you're going to trust with your kids or your cat to not knock over. So that's a new Amazon Kindle Fire HD 7-inch model, available now starting at $199 for the 16 gig, and there's also a 32 gig model. Definitely all the right improvements here from the original Kindle Fire. Is it an earth-stopping tablet? I know after Amazon's wonderful presentation about these new Fire models, they sound like the, the best thing since sliced bread. Well. Earth shattering, no, but a really nice product and very good for content consumption. Yeah, particularly you like the Amazon ecosystem, you're a Prime member, you get those videos, you get the selection of Kindle books, you can sideline your own books on this as well if they're in a compatible Mobi format. Magazines are a nice experience as well. There's a lot to like here. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to visit our website for the full review and subscribe to our YouTube channel too.